Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben You here for another legacy video. Looks like my hair is awesome for this video. We're just going to roll with that. All right, um, today we're going to be playing Greg the Orange's uh, Reality Chip Psy deck list. Uh, now, they have been working on trying to make the Reality Chip work for quite some time, and oh, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago or so, um, I kind of took one of their first drafts through a league, and it went okay, but the reality chip was a little bit clunky and hard to get equipped. So we're going to try a different angle of attack. Um, and if you are kind of interested in following their, their line of thoughts, their various deck lists, there's a lot of that information in my Discord. So essentially, what you can do once you have the reality chip, chip equipped, it has to be equipped. So it's going to take five total mana for this to do its thing, is you can play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. Well, when you have 22 zero drops in your deck, as well as many things that have affinity, so they actually don't cost that much, you can really churn through your deck lists. And if you find like Lotus Petals and Mox Opals and LEDs and LEDs, go and fuel all of these things um, you can actually do a disgusting amount of stuff so we are not a full-on combo deck this time around we have a lot of mid-range elements and a lot of what you're going to see here is going to look really similar to the eight cast shell but we're not actually playing kappa cannoneers as a finisher we are looking to have a lot of artifacts in play and we can go wide with Psy by making a whole bunch of thopters or we can go tall by creating a couple of very large Urza Saga, or rather, Construct tokens, either with Urza Saga itself or with Urza Lord High Artificer. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to give this deck a, a shot. We have a pretty respectable Urza Saga package because, like, just innately we want to have a lot of artifacts in this deck list. And some of these things are useful even if I don't just tutor them in with Urza Saga, right? Like Springleaf Drum plus Psy or something like that can help bridge me to an Urza. Or it can help get me to the five total mana necessary to get Reality Chip equipped and kind of do its thing. Um, just briefly talking about the sideboard here. Yeah, honestly, it's mostly stuff for unfair decks, right? So like we've got Fluster, Mystical Dispute, Force of Will, Force of Negation, or a total of seven counter spells. We have four ley lines, and then we have four cards for fair matchups. We have Echoing Truths and Dismembers. Um, kind of the hope here is that either Urza Saga or Urza itself will be enough to beat fair matchups. And we're not playing Force of Wills in game one. And the reason for that is the reality chip itself, right? If you get a, a Force of Will on top of your library, you can't really clear that off. You just have to naturally draw that. Um, so that's kind of the rationale for not wanting to play that in game one. Um, yeah, I think with that said, um, let's just go ahead and jump into the games. Um, I want to thank you all for uh, all the engagement I got last week on my videos. Uh, some of those videos are going to go on to become my best performing videos of all time. I know the 8 Mulch video, I believe that one's already cleared like 30k or something like that. The Yoko Hops one is north of 20k at this point. Um, so, so thank you. The likes and comments mean a lot. Um, I'm having a lot of ses success as a creator right now, and it feels fantastic. All right, let's hop into the league. Okay, um, so this hand goes Speed, Petal, Emery for one mana on turn one, and then like we have an Urza Saga and a Thoughtcast as follow up. Um, totally happy with this hand. Let's do the thing. Um, now, Reality Chip is a three of in this deck list. We don't necessarily want it in the opening hand. It's something okay. Um, it's something that will provide us with a uh, good inevitability, but it's not really great in the initial turns. Like that's something you maybe want like around turn four or something like that, where you, like you already have some mana, you have a creature in play. Hello. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh, we are playing against 8 Mulch, folks. Um, and I have obviously been very impressed by this deck. Okay, they are they are not willing to kind of do the thing yet. Alright. Is this, uh, probably an Urza Saga turn? I think I'm gonna increase my artifact count here. So this brings me to 3. This brings me to 4. Now I can cast the Thought Cast for 1 mana before I play my land drop just in case something changes. 
Are we? I think we are. I think we are. Uh, how can I not YOLO this, right? This is three to equip. This is three mana. All right. Here we go. Um, ignore what I said about wanting this uh, on a, a later turn. Having it right fucking now. LED is a fair and balanced magic card. All right, there is a Memnite. We're going to attach this to an... Oh, oh, okay, I need to actually activate this beforehand. I can't activate this in the middle. So we'll reconfigure that to Ornithopter. And here we go. Ah, oh, I got one card. <laughs> so I've already made my land drop, so I can't play that one. But like with an Emery to recycle artifacts from my graveyard and like with an Ancient Tomb boost of mana coming up, I think I'm likely to do some pretty gross things next turn. Getting a Sigh is kind of the dream here. So here's a Mulch effect of some kind. What is Commune with Spirits? Look at the top four, reveal a land, put it into your hand. Okay, that is some neat. Well, okay, actually, it's a land or an enchantment. So, like, that does hit the mana bonds and the explorations. Um, I actually really like that tech. I haven't seen that before. Um, let's see if this mana bond wants to hurt me. Oh, they're thinking about it. Not yet. Okay. So there is another Ancient Tomb on top. I will play that off the top of my library. And now, now we're going to try to churn through cards. Um, it is probably worth one mana to just clear this off the top of my library. It will also just, like, mill some new things. I will keep the non-summoning sick Emery. Ooh, okay, there's some good stuff in there. Die. Yes. All right, so we're going to go three mana. Play a Psy, activate Emery. Um, I'm going to target LED for just triple blue here. Cast LED. Now, the the Psy here makes that particularly good. Um, am I always activating Urza's Saga? One, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is one mana. Um, I guess I don't need to make that decision now. Oh, it does. It does actually cost two. Um. Cancel that. Um, I guess I'll do this first. In that case. Right, so now, crack that. Play Thought Monitor. Alright, I found more mana. Uh, okay, well, I guess I'll play that. Okay. This is what you came here for, right, folks? Just, like, absolutely wacky wild shit. Ooh, that's protection from Merit Lodge. I'm super happy with that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I'll cast a Mox Opal. Load a mana with it. I guess cast a new Mox Opal. Keep the new one. Load a mana with it. I'll just play this Psy. Doesn't matter which one I keep. I already played a land. I've already played a land. Crash for one. Um, I guess I could cycle that Aether Spellbomb, but I really would like to keep that for just a Merit Lodge in case that's something that matters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, right. 17, 17. 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, yeah, okay. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Okay, there's a land drop from my opponent. Into Winding Way. Absolutely. All right, what just entered the Revealed Zone? Nothing I care too much about. Like, Field of the Dead randomly making a billion power is kind of scary. Otherwise, I think I'm okay. Um, Tabernacle. Uh, okay. Actually, not sure how much that's going to matter. Like, it's about to happen. <laughs> uh. How many times does that Field of the Dead trigger? Oh. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yep. Yep. Fair. <laughs> okay. One. I've got some things to think about. Um. Do I have a Pithing Needle? That's a very important question for this Maze of Ith. No, I do not have a Game 1 Pithing Needle. So I want to keep Construct, Psy, Ornithopter, Emery for sure. That's four mana. I can keep one other thing. 
might need a second Urza Saga token. So I could keep one, two, I could keep all my important stuff. Okay, cool. Okay, that was a major pain to click through. Um, I will just go ahead and make this here. I need to kind of go wide of what my opponent is doing. I will grab Shadow Spear? Shadow Spear in my graveyard already? Shadow Spear in play already? Shadow Spear is in my deck, right? I'm not crazy. Shadow Spear? Um Okay, it okay, it is in my graveyard. Grab a retrofitter foundry, I guess, then. Alright. There is a new Urza Saga. And we'll cast a whole bunch of stuff off the top of my library. I do kind of wish that I had a way to get rid of that tabernacle. Oh, that's the stack. I already played a land. So, activate Emery. Get that Shadow Spear for the future. I will play that for one mana. Let's go ahead and sacrifice that bobble. And because of Maze of Ith, I don't have a good attack this turn. I have respectable attacks next turn. And I can convert a Thopter into a 4-4 as well. Um, you know what? Just so I can F6 my opponent's turn, because like this is going to be gross, I am just going to sacrifice a Thopter right now. And uh, then we'll let my opponent pay for some of their triggers. Okay, the stack's clear. My opponent fetched twice in the middle of this here. Um, grabbing a Stomping Grounds, and I think the other one was just a basic forest. That's why there's a couple with Summoning Sickness now. Um, Tabernacle is a card that's pretty miserable to play with on Magic Online, just uh, in terms of raw number of clicks. So if you notice some uh, random, like, upkeep time skips in this video, it's it's us clicking through Tabernacle. Uh, yep, absolutely. Ooh, no basic lands. Are there no basic lands in my deck? There's one. Okay. Um, I think at this point my opponent is just going to ghost quarter me two or three times this turn, take me off mana, and then, like, end up winning this. Um, do I have a sideboard answer to this card? Echoing Truth can't hit lands. No? Um, so I think I've found something that my deck can't beat. Um, I, I, I just don't think I can beat a Tabernacle, right? Like, I go down to two things here. I can keep two large constructs and like equip them with a shadow spear um i think i am unlikely enough to win this game that for viewer entertainment here i'm gonna go ahead and just move to the next game okay so i have to figure out my approach to this game is my approach i'm going to try to do a broken thing again and hope they don't have tabernacle or is my approach i am going to try to become as disruptive as possible in order to stop my opponent from finding a tabernacle. I don't know the answer to that question without having played more games. I feel like my opponent wins the long game every time. So does that mean I just try to combo again? Like, I, I did something batshit insane on turn three. Like, do I just try to do that again and just hope it goes better for me? Or do I actually try to board some amount of this stuff? Like, they're problematic though, right? Because like Leyline of the Void doesn't really stop like the mulch mana bond exploration side of the deck. It only stops the life from the loam side of the deck. And the Force of Will and Force of Negation stuff doesn't do anything against my opponent just like drawing one of their four tabernacles. I'm gonna I'm gonna submit the game one deck again. I don't love that, but I'm going to try to do something broken. Um, I have no initial mana source here. Um, LED doesn't count in that regard. This one has to be a mulligan. Uh, I will absolutely keep this hand. I have to figure out how to play it. Because I can just go like City, Petal, Psy, Memnite on turn one. I think it's better to wait and play Psy on turn two. And I th think I am just going to pitch the thought cast here and use Emery for my fuel. The worst part is I, ha I have to, like, win two games, right? Um, I don't know how likely that is to happen, because, like, a turn one tabernacle feels rushing. Um, but we will try. So there's my two artifacts. 
make this cost one mana and i won't play the lotus petal until next turn for sigh although i can be punished by a sphere of resistance for not doing so if i don't if i don't play this out and my opponent plays a sphere i can't actually sigh next turn oh tabby no tabby no tabby no tabby all right uh because my opponent has like multiple exploration type effects i cannot get excited yet pyroblast yeah okay Surgical on my Emery. I do not mind that. I'm like a little surprised my opponent boarded in Surgical. Not overly surprised, but a little surprised. Alright. So there's three mana Psy. I will get two Thopters out of this. And then... If I want... How much does this activate? This is two. So I could sacrifice... My LED and two Thopters to draw two cards here. I don't think that's worth it. I think I'm just going to go ahead and crash in. Like, if I draw two zero drop artifacts, like, cool. But I am looking to kill my opponent at the end of the day. I am looking to reduce their life total to zero, and I don't want to decrease the amount of power that I have in play right now. All right. There is a commune with spirits. I guess I can X out my own graveyard. I'm not going to need that anymore. Finding a mana bond. Folks, this is terrifying. I really like my opponent's build. All right. Are we doing it? Uh, that discards a life from the loam. That's legit. All right. Urza is the draw for turn, and that is very good. I'm going to play that. I get this. Um, I don't want to sacrifice things to draw a card. No, that's okay. I get a lightning bolt worth of damage this turn. Roughly a lava axe worth of damage next turn. And we ramp up from there. So like the big thing here is like, does opponent hit a tabernacle with their life from the loam dredge? If the answer is yes, I am screwed. Uh, it's a field of the dead and a wasteland. Um, those are very good cards. Yeah, so that'll just be a tap stomping ground for the sake of different names. And my, then my opponent gets three lands here. Oh, no. Uh, so the three is super relevant, right? Because that means um, Anabond gets to do its thing. Putting in all three of those, meaning the Field of the Dead, triggers off of those lands. I guess we're always yielding to that at this point. Um, an opponent has one more sneaky zombie here. Ox Opal. All right, I'm going to cast that, and then I think I'm going to spin the wheel here. I go one, two, Memnite can't attack, three, four, five, and the wheel with Urza Saga, a Lotus Petal out of it, which is cool. Go again? I think I'll go again. So at this point, I can just use Lotus Petal as a mana source. Um, I guess I'm going to sack LED here because I want to attack with these Thopters. Um, I think I should attack with my Constructs and my Thopters right now um, because Maze of Ith is going to happen. And Maze of Ith happening untaps one of these. Ooh, Maze of Ith happening. Or rather, Maze of Ith is not happening. So I do have to sacrifice the LED. There's three. Four, five, activate this. I found a new Lotus Petal. I end up in the same position with artifacts, but with more creatures, and then at this point I can't do it again. All right, so my opponent gets a couple more zombies. Please don't find a tabernacle. Another wasteland. Um, that other wasteland is setting me up for just dying to Tabernacle, though. Just like... All right, there's Wasteland on Seat. I think I will tap this Lotus Petal. That's two mana for this. A sacrifice you, and I will sacrifice the Memnite and just draw a card there. Top monitor's legit. Then my opponent will Life from the Loam, and I'll lose this City of Traitors as well. So I'll, uh, I'll kill my opponent in the air next turn. New Psy. Um, that's not doing a ton. All right. 
one mana thought monitor is my starting point. Draw a couple of cards. All right. Play this. I'm a little surprised my city didn't get wastelanded. All right. Tap the Memnite. Tap a Thopter. Three, four. Lotus Petal, five. Activate this. Oh, um, I can just play this, right? Um, I can, but I probably don't want to. So I will send in with my Thopters and my Giant Construct token. We're going to see a Chump block. And I just... No, no Maze of Ith activation. All right. Um, I'm not going to draw two cards with Psy. Like, I could Junk, Lotus Petal, and Memnite to do that, but I'm treating those as mana sources. Okay, opponent found a Caracas, but they did not find a Tabernacle. Um, so I think I have Lethal in the air. My opponent didn't activate their Maze of Ith targeting my Thopters, though. I had seven damage. Did they have three? Uh, did they have three chances to activate Maze of Ith and didn't? Or did, was it just two? It might have been the difference between them having another turn to look and not. Um, I am sort of thinking about playing Echoing Truth on the draw as a way to just clear out all of the zombie tokens, though. Um, I don't think I want that on the play, but on the draw, I think I respect it. Do I cut Aether Spellbomb? I do, I do not believe that I have seen any piece of the Dark Depths combo in two relatively long games. It's a very bad thing to be wrong about. But are my Urza Sagas going to live to tutor this up anyway? Maybe not. All right. Um, what's my other card I cut? I cut one LED. They're a little situational. Um, does this hand actually do anything? Not fast. So I can play Seat into Seat into Opal. Have a two mana turn two thought cast. I'll just be immediately dead to a Wasteland lock with this hand. Just don't get off the ground. So I would prefer... What over this? A Psy hand, an Emery hand. Like, does this just have enough draw effects that it negates the slowness of this hand? Uh, I'll keep it. There's a decent number of draws that improve this a lot. An Emery improves this a lot, a Psy improves this a lot, an Ancient Tomb improves this a lot. Um, even a Bobble makes things better. Our right, opponent is going to 5. To 4. Wow. Uh, I'm not celebrating yet, because, like, opponent could just, like, play one Tabernacle and like basically win the game off of that alone so you know absolutely not going to get excited yet sure that's fine and are you using it no um so i could play urza saga here and then literally any artifact allows me to activate that next turn like literally any zero cost artifact does that there's 20 some odd outs for that i think i'm gonna go ahead and take that like, if I miss, I miss. Um, I don't remember exactly. I think it's like 26. I could, all right, a mulch. Yeah, so like this probably undoes my opponent's mulligan. Okay, there is a thespian stage. So that stuff is in there. Please hit any zero drop artifact, please. Not activating mana. Okay, fantastic. All right. Beat. Opal. Ornithopter. I now can start activating Urza Saga. And now I just have to race my opponent finding um, Tabernacle, essentially. All right, there's the Maze of Ith. That's fine. Uh, let's do this song and dance and see if my opponent mana bonds. They do not. Okay. I will activate this. And I might just be grabbing Retrofitter Foundry here because it turns Ornithopter into a beater although like maybe if i'm trying to play around dark depths i just get shadow spear to increase my life total above 20 i'll do that all right so land drop bring leaf drum tap ornithopter for blue thought monitor draw two um that's everything i can do this turn um, next turn could be pretty gross. Like, I legit could just kill my opponent through Maze of Ith, uh, by creating two 20 power creatures, um, and I don't think that's hyperbole. Because, like, they're, they're 9-9s already. 
So I'd only need to play like five or six artifacts after playing a Psy. That's possible with Reality Chip. Just that. And uh, see if Manabon ruins my life. It does not. All right. I'm going to start with a Thought Cast before doing anything else. Okay. Turn's tough. I have, I have a few different things that I care about. Um, sort of on board here. Gasai, Ornithopter, yield to that. I'm going to try to draw into something like an LED to do my bo most broken possible lines. Um, Echoing Truth is cool. Um, but I really wanted a LED or a Lotus Petal or something like that here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I really don't mind having Echoing Truth. Um, that just means my turn is much, much, much safer. When it goes to 7 after all that's said and done. When it can copy a Maze of Ith if they want. Makes it a little harder for me. Yeah, it makes it a little harder for me to actually kill them next turn. Um, so discounting those, I have two, three. I only have four power next turn. Ooh, we got the GGs from the opponent. Um, uh, our our opponent mulliganed into uh, oblivion here. Um, I I think this matchup is exceptionally tough, and I think I got a little lucky. Like this is turn five, and my board looks very, very, very good. But all it took was my opponent finding a tabernacle in one of those mulligans, or finding a tabernacle off a mulch or a life from the loam. And most of this would have fallen apart. Okay. Um, I have a bit of a tricky opening hand here. So Urza Saga is my only land, and this is a disappearing land. But I can play a turn one Emery. But it costs me my Lotus Petal. I think this hand is awkward enough that I don't keep it, despite the fact that I can turn one Emery. Because, like, I, I need to use my mana for a few turns to get stuff like this online and to equip this. Um, I think I'm going to take a mulligan here. Uh, ah. I don't have that many untapped blue sources, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12. I don't think I can do that. Uh, okay. This is a keep. I think I have to throw back the Urza. Just because, like, double blue is not super reasonable right now. And then I think I'm going to throw back the City of Traders. Because what I have right now can still make a turn one Emery, right? Like, I play these three artifacts, I play Emery, and then I hope that that turn one Emery with some sustainable mana is good enough to do something. Underground Sea, Doomsday? Fuck! No! Oh! Storm, sure. Storm's not the bad guy. Absolutely. Do your thing. Um, so this is uh, going to be presumably ad nauseum. And an ad nauseum from that high of a life total should kill me unless my opponent just like fails to hit a lotus petal to get things started. Which actually, oh, there it is. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Does opponent have a payoff card? Um, like, there's a bunch of Dark Rituals and Cabal Rituals and stuff. Uh, oh, no, no, there is an Infernal Tutor that I missed. Yeah, uh, so there, that will be an Infernal Tutors for Tendrils. Yep. And I'll let them throw it on the stack. Um, for what it's worth, I think they should have duressed me to try to gain information about what I was playing. All right, um, here we are going to see a shit ton of sideboard cards. All right, Bluster, Dispute, Dispute. Negation, Force of Wills. Ley lines are playable, but not great. Um, so note, my, my opponent is, is playing what is sometimes called Burning Ant. Uh, it is an ant build wish, with Burning Wish. All right. Um, I do not need Aether Spellbomb for this matchup. I do not need Retrofit or Foundry for this matchup. Those are my easiest cuts. From there, I need to board out five more cards, assuming I don't play Ley Line, which I don't think I'm going to. Um, if I am adding in the Fluster Storms and Force of Negations and all of this stuff, the Reality Chip becomes significantly worse. So I think I'm going to cut those. Then what, I need two more. With Reality Chip gone, LED becomes significantly worse as well. LED can still be used with Urza. LED can still be used with some Emery shenanigans. It's still a zero drop for enabling Metalcraft. It still makes Sopters with Psy. It has uses. Um, it's possible Retrofitter Foundry is better than LED in this boarding configuration 
because it does just allow you to make a 4-4 on turn 1 if you draw it with an Ornithopter, but I think I'm going to ignore that. Um, this is a very good hand. I'm going to believe in the deck to draw a Counterspell and keep this hand. So I go Urza Saga, Springleaf Drum, Ornithopter, Mox Opal, Emery. That's a lot of cards on turn 1. All right, Saga, Springleaf Drum, Ox Opal, Ornithopter, Emery. Yes, have three artifacts in play. That's okay. Like, Urza Saga clocks hard. Like, I can absolutely try to kill my opponent with an Urza Saga token as my primary plan here. All right. There's a Memnite. There's a seat. Just one mana yet. It's two mana. So I can go get Urza's Bobble. Now this is one mana. Draw two. Oh, that's sneaky. So it's going to look like I'm just keeping up an Urza Saga activation when I actually have Force of Negation. I'll miss out on the Construct token if I have to Force of Negation, but if I Force of Negation, it potentially just wins me the game. So, like, there's that. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Yep. I'm going to let that happen. Sure. Vernal Tutor, holding priority to cast a Cabal Ritual. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Casting another one. Oh. Is Past in Flames going to kill me if I counter Infernal Tutor? Opponent will have nine mana. No, if I counter Infernal Tutor, they don't have a way to actually win. I'm going to Force of Negation that. And we'll just exile that card. And then that stops my opponent in their tracks this turn. Okay, there there is a concession. Um, I think that's a bad concession, though. Like, opponent has a Past in Flames in Graveyard and a whole bunch of mana. They just need to find a business spell. And since I didn't make this Urza Saga Construct token, I only get in for, like, three or four points of damage there. All right, um, on the draw, do I want the Ley Lines? I'm not in love with them. It may be that, like, Ley Line backed by Urza Saga is just strong enough that I do it. The LEDs are of medium power level. Um, but, like, this card is also of medium power level. Um, can I shave the Shadow Spear? If I connect with a Construct with a Shadow Spear on it, it's, it's just, like, such a hurdle to overcome, though. Although a lot of times if I get to the point that I connect with a Construct twice, I just win the game anyway. Um, let's get rid of that. And, I don't know, one one piece of late game. We've definitely diluted the deck a little bit here. Absolutely. I will absolutely just keep the Urza Saga hand with a Ley Line, like I just talked about. Then just kind of trust that I will either draw a blue source or more zero drop artifacts um, to make this hand reasonable. Um, this is a hand that's just kind of like immune to uh, discard uh, really mattering. Yeah, this is exactly what I was just talking about, right? Like my opponent casts a discard spell, but it just kind of doesn't matter based on the texture of what's in my hand. So we'll play that out. We'll play that out. Um, and here, here, here's to hoping an Urza Saga can go all the way. Like. Once it ticks up a few times, I can find um, a blue source of some kind to turn on Mystical Dispute. Um, so this is perfectly reasonable. Opponent can still combo off without using their graveyard this turn. Like, I, I, I am not out of this shit. But turning on this Mystical Dispute would be very strong. Okay. That's bad. So that's five mana... Six mana, seven, eight total mana here. Colonel Tutor. Or is this a goblin situation? Oh no, sorry, it's an Adnaw situation. Of course it is. Okay. Uh, uh, opponent is in trouble. Uh, okay. Uh, no, they don't have. Uh, they don't have blue mana up for Chain of Vapor. Um, did they make a land drop yet? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, we take those. We have gotten the the GGs, uh, and we're two and zero with the reality chip. Um, before I start with round three, um, I just wanted to say like the ley line was definitely relevant in that last matchup, right? Like it denied uh, mana with uh, cabal ritual and stopped a passing flames kill potentially. Okay, um, 
So this could be a keep. I go Opal, Petal, LED, play Emery. Have Emery to recur these things for mana. But I think I'm just going to try to find a hand that's a little less volatile. Uh, a couple of Memnites and a Shadow Spear just hanging out, just chilling. I don't think so. <laughs> what have I done? The anger, the shuffler. I will go to four. At this point, I... <laughs> Fuck me! Okay. Um, at this point, I'm just hoping to keep an Emery hand on three, I guess. Jeez. That's horrendous. Ugh. Uh, okay. All casts go back. They're not castable. Second one of these goes back. Ornith? No, Bobble goes back. Um, I am... Probably just going to concede this one after seeing what deck my opponent is. Okay, we're probably playing against elves. Uh, well... Alright. I don't think I need to play this Ornithopter yet. Um, I'm not going to concede the game yet. Because, like, there, there is a world where I just, like, uh, a blue land this turn into an LED next turn, just absolutely go off with the reality chip, but... Uh, that that's just one of those bad beats moments. Like can't can't be mad about it. Just have to accept that like that's variance and that happens. Uh, yep, a green sun is fine. Probably just gets uh, an elvish visionary, unless they have oof. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was almost real good. Um, I'll play out these things, and I don't know. Maybe I can uh. Yeah, I can turn a couple of constructs sideways and my opponent won't have a natural order or a green sun or an Allosaurus Shepherd uh, to kill me. Um, that makes it much harder to get in the red zone and actually kill my opponent, though. Sure. I have a spell bomb that I can... Nope, nope, that spell bomb is not an answer to collect roof. That is not how that works. Oh god, Cradle. All right, there is a natural order. My death is swift. Maybe not painless, but but swift. All right, all right, that's that's fine. Um, I don't have anything crazy like plague engineers here. Um, what is my plan? I think bringing in the counter spells versus the Allosaurus Shepherd deck is probably not appropriate. I think I will board in some minimal amount of disruption in the form of dismember. Um, maybe. Well, the spell bomb's good against Archon, but bad against Oof, but my entire deck's bad versus Oof, so like there's that. I don't see myself getting a retrofit or foundry. So, like Shadow Spears Trample or Aether Spellbomb just popping something relevant out of play seems more important as a tutor target. Um I don't know if I want to cut a Memnite. Like Memnite's not getting into the red zone ever, but like Memnite is a zero drop. And like I really need my Mox Opals to be consistently on here. Got one reality chip, I think. Okay. This will be a keep. I will I will still get bodied by a collector oof, but like this is gonna be a keep. Alright, so we'll go seat, M Knight, play in Emery. And I'll hold these zero drop artifacts in play in case I uh somehow can like do a sigh next turn. Um this is a this is a scary matchup. Like, Elves is just objectively powerful, and my opponent, like, does not have to get to four mana to win the game. They can just do a green sun for X equals two, and that gets pretty damn close to winning the game. Okay. So, I will go ahead and cast this Lotus Petal. Artifact count is three. Artifact count is four. Artifact count is five. This is currently two mana, so I will play my Ancient Tomb. And use one of my mana here. And I have three mana, so if I draw a Psy, I can just play one. There's also a world where I crack an LED in response to this trigger. Glad I didn't. Um, so I will now hold these cards and call that a turn. I can still Lotus Petal for the new Emery next turn if I don't draw anything cool. Don't think opponent's going to trade away their Dryad Arbor, though. Just... Throwing it out there. Don't don't feel like that's gonna happen. Oh god, they're just going off with glimpse of nature. Like they can play like mana dork into 
Cradle and get pretty deep this turn, because Cradle would give them two mana to play two more elves to tap Heritage Druid um, for mana. Oh, okay. It's gonna be, it's just gonna be a baby glimpse. Just a value glimpse. That's fine. Um, I did not want to draw another opal here. Um let's try to do something cool with Emery. I'll play this one. Keep the one that does not have summoning sickness. Use this trigger to try to fish something new into the graveyard to do. Found a thought monitor. Uh so I have one, two, three, four, five, six. This does cost one mana. Um, but so I don't lose a Lotus Petal, I'll play this one out. Emery, target Thought Monitor. Force of Vigor on two of my artifacts. Sure. One, two, three, four, five. So what, this currently costs two. Um, I lose out on a creature for like a sigh if I do that, but I think... Maximizing my chances of like playing Urza and then doing something cool afterwards. <laughs> ah, seems really important. Yep, uh, we'll uh, we'll hold those, I guess. That was uh, that was rough. Uh, this is a lot of mana. I didn't board out that much gas, did I? Like, I think I boarded out one Reality Chip, and I guess uh, technically a Retrofitter Foundry counts as gas too. Okay, we are seeing an Elvish Reclaimer activation for presumably a Gaia's Cradle. Yep. I don't think that needed to happen at sorcery speed. Um, but I I respect the desire to F6. Uh another bobble. Uh not really where I want to be. Take my two damage here. Drops my opponent to fifteen. Oh shit, I had another thought monitor in there. Maybe sh should not have attacked yet because of Shadow Spear. Okay. There's another one mana thought monitor. <laughs> the wee bit of mana. An Urza Saga. A Springleaf Drum. A Bobble. I can wait to crack that because I don't have counter spells in my deck right now. Um, I assume this cradle brutalizes me in one way or another. All right. Um, I am going to Urza's Bobble. And then F6. And uh, we're just gonna... Oh, second glimpse. We're just gonna buckle up and uh, expect to be dead here. Oh, Pana has one card left. Um, I guess, like, theoretically, they could brick on two cards in a row. Um, probably not three, though. So... That's bad. That's, uh, that's so many draws. The Wirewood can just bounce Elvish Visionary now if my opponent bricks off. Otherwise, they can just wait on that and use that to untap creatures to kill me with. Okay, yeah, there is the uh, Elvish Visionary. Ancestral Visionary. Draw three. Um, and now at this point, like, I'm probably north of 90% dead this turn and 100% dead next turn. Right, there is the Cradle Activation. All right, there is a Collector Oof. So most of my combo potential is dead. So it would just be trying to kill my opponent with thought monitors in like two turns. Oh, there's a, there's a natural order. All right, that's a hoof. Um, oh, it's just a, it's just a hoof for twelve. No big deal. No big deal at all. Totally beatable. Totally. Never mind my opponent's eight cards that are still in hand. Um, a mem knight. Reality chip. Uh, so I can't reconfigure that. That's an artifact. Not technically dead. Technically. Life is just awful. We'll cast this Memnite. Pick up. Actually, none of this does anything, right? None of this does anything as long as Collector Roof is around. So I'll just leave this back as a blocker. And the hope is that I can just kill my opponent in the air while doing some jump blocking on the ground. It's, uh, very unlikely to work. Um, there's an untap of Dryad Arbor for mana. Sure. Okay. So that can repeat all that stuff. Very surprised that I'm not just explicitly immediately dead. Um, an Allosaurus Shepherd would do that. There's three, six, seven, eight creatures already for Cradle. Oh, it's just Visionary. Just Visionary. Okay. Uh, sure, sure, sure. 
So my my current plan is like block with some artifact creatures, let them die, bring them back with Emery, block with them again. Um, but uh, opponent is like very obviously going wide of what I am capable of doing right now. And both of my ancient tombs are realistically off because of my life total. So I don't think I get saved by a sigh off the top of the deck. Okay, we're in the attacks, Tep. Oh wait, can I kill Collector Oof and maybe rattle off a win somehow? Uh, yeah, that's actually possible, right? Memnite, Memnite on Collector Oof. Oh, shit, they've got more. They've got like a Force of Vigor. Okay, yeah, they have a Force of Vigor. Okay, um, so that's a disaster. So that blocks this, and then there's still lethal coming in. Get rid of one of these, take five, go to one, keep the emery. Um, but I'm I'm two points short here. I don't know how I get the last two points. Shadow Spear can give me one if my opponent fetches. Okay, opponent did not fetch. I also just can't tap the ancient tomb. Oh, it's so close. Or no, Shadow Spear couldn't have given me the one because Collector Roof is an asshole. Alright, uh, dead. Six in the air. I'm dead on the backswing, even with one more blocker. Yeah, okay. Dead. Alright, GG's. Hey folks, Phil here. I hope you're enjoying the show. If you are, please consider subscribing to the channel or liking the video if you haven't done that already. If you want to financially support my channel, there's lots of ways to do that, ranging from Patreon to doing a donation deck list, and all that information is available in the video description. All right, back to the games. There are no lands in this deck. I have been forsaken by the Moto Shuffler. I will offer appropriate sacrifices in between rounds. Uh, I absolute keep. So the question is, like, do I want to keep another land to be better against Wasteland, or do I want to keep another artifact? I would like to keep another land to be better versus Wasteland. We'll see whether or not that decision gets paid off. Maybe? Delver or not Delver? Delver or not Delver? Not Delver. Uh, 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 I helped make this deck popular. That video was so hot and so much fun to play. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Okay. So, one has multiple Maze of Iths, uh, essentially. Um, they need to top deck gas, and I actually wonder if they played correctly. Like, they could have waited another turn and then, like, crop rotated for dark depths. I wonder if they fucked that up. Guess let's always yield to that. Yeah. I, I wonder if that was a misplay. Like, man, Mana Bond is a very skill testing card. It doesn't look like it is, but it absolutely is. Um, a bobble on their turn. And I have, like, Reality Chip plus LED to activate. Uh, opponent didn't copy anything with their stage. Okay, they have found a life from the loam. Um, so shit's gonna get real. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I assume this is just the tapped... Oh, nope, I'm wrong. A new mana bond. Uh, sure. Um, we'll just sacrifice that. And then these uh, triggers obviously don't do anything when my opponent is hellbent. Do what we draw. Okay. LED. I'm about to junk my hand. Equip a reality chip. This is legendary. Just FYI. Going to junk for blue. Equip to a summoning stick thopter. And uh, see if we can go absolutely insane here and try to kill my opponent next turn it's looking good so far i think i am going to crack this for blue mana here um just because like some weird things could happen where like i end up drawing an urza that i would very much like to put into play okay there is a thought cast um let's do this we'll thought cast there's an emery Cool, cool, cool. An Ornithopter. Yeah, this is why I didn't play the Mox Opal from hand, by the way. Yeah. Okay. So, play some stuff. I'm just, I'm just thinking about Tabernacle, just passively to myself. Um, I think I'm going to do this. Play this. Keep this Mox Opal. I think it is better for me 
to just activate Psy. I should have done this before playing the other Mox Opal, actually. Junk some Thopters here. Let's just draw that and get that off of the top of my library. Go blue mana. Play an Aether Spell Bomb. Blue mana Thought Cast. We're going absolutely wild. Okay, there is an Urza. Uh, so let's play that. I think I'm going to play my entire deck now. Alright. There's three mana. There's four mana. There's Urza. Uh, I will tap a critter. Play an Emery. I'll keep one of these. They're both summoning sick. It doesn't matter which one. Um, at this point, not done. I will use this. You know what? That's, pro that's probably greedy. I should just keep this around. I should just keep that around so my opponent can't randomly make a Merit Lodge and accidentally kill me somehow. I will, I will stop there. Like, I, I could draw this and try to keep going. Actually, uh, I can keep going a different way. Uh, that's fine. All right, opponent goes to 16. Now it just requires a little more work, so I go one, Emery, keep one of these, clear the library. Okay, now I'm now I'm actually stuck unless I draw that land. All right, good turn. Good good turn three. Get another card with my bobble here. Um, actually, I could have kept going by sacking more stuff with Psy. Um, yeah, maybe I should have kept going. Because I can go, like, two mana with Psy, sacrifice two Thopters, keep going. I, I also could have, like, kept going with Urza. Yeah, I, I had more options there than what I did. But I don't think I can get an actual factual kill that turn. But I could have ended up with more Thopters in play. Okay, so this is going to be the same thing as before, where it's, like, how much do I board? I won game one this time. I think I'm just going to go with Echoing Truth. And I'm somewhat unsure what to cut. Like, we're, we're an engine deck, so you have to be careful. Like, the legendary creatures are a little worse because of things like Caracas. Some of the slower things are a little worse because my opponent can, like, oops, mana bond win. The reality chip becomes a little worse versus Tabernacle. I, I think I'll trim that package and call it good. Um, I am going to keep this, hoping that this goes somewhere. Um, my turn one isn't good. My turn two is. Like, on turn two... I, I, I go Seat, I go City, I go Psy, Ornithopter, and then turn three I have Urza. And then, like, Urza plus Psy makes a lot of mana and does a lot of bullshit. Okay, no, no mana bond trigger from my opponent here. Oh, um, I'll go faster. I can make turn one Psy instead. But then I can't make turn two Urza. I think Psy into Urza matters. Um, so I'm just going to play a land and hope I don't get Wastelanded. Okay. Not immediately getting Wastelanded, but, like, Mulch is a thing. Alright, there is one. Love this art, by the way. Uh, there is a Wasteland and a Basechu and a Life from the Loam. Uh, okay. I assume I am about to get Wastelanded, but, like, I could be wrong. Jesus, and Tabernacle? Oh, yeah, and Dark Depths? What the fuck? Oh, opponent did not wasteland me? Oh, right. A bunch of these don't produce mana. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm not dead yet. It's scary, but I'm not dead. So there's Psy. There's Ornithopter. Yield to that. There's Lotus Petal. One, one, two, three, four, five. So I can't cast that for one mana yet. Um, so I guess I'll be calling out a turn there. Okay, yeah, opponent opponent is going to opt to attack my mana. So if they attack my mana um, with life from the loam, they just put me down to uh, zero real mana sources after I use Lotus Petal for one turn, and then they can uh, win with Dark Depths at their convenience. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm not technically dead, but... Um, I think I'm going to take a draw step and probably concede. Because I, sa I save Psy this turn, and then, like, my seat gets wastelanded. And unless I draw, like, the basic island, I don't really see myself getting out of this. Bye, cruel world. This one I pay for. Uh, okay. Gun seed. Yeah, like, that's the sort of game that a play line would look good against. 
But again, on these mulch hands, like Leyline doesn't do shit. I'm I'm going to stick with my strategy of trying to kill my opponent because I think I am very much a dog in the long game. Um, well, that's the ultimate. Do you have wasteland hand, right? Just turn one saga, turn two, make a token a variety of different ways. It's very aggressive. All right. My deck is not really going to do the things I designed my deck to do here. We're just going to try to bash with a Modern Horizons 2 card. <laughs> I, I guess on my opponent's end, it does need to be multiple wastelands, though, right? Because if my opponent just has one wasteland, I just, like, repeat this process. Okay, cool, cool. This doesn't mean a lot, though, because, like, there's Mana Bond and Exploration, so my opponent would play their green source prior to playing a wasteland if they have one of those other things. Yep. Okay, that is a Field of the Dead. That is fine. I'm going to try to sandbag these things. These, all, all these cards. Maybe not Bobble. Maybe Bobble? Maybe not Bobble. Because, like, if my opponent doesn't think they're taking that much, they might not do something that answers this Urza Saga Construct token, and I end up getting in for a bunch of damage. Um, but I'm not sure if I want to redraw on this. I think I just want this to sit in play. Yeah, okay. On the city. Uh, so we're... We're playing the disappearing land game. Okay. Um, might end up getting like a Mox Opal. Make it easier to activate my next Urza Saga. Life from the Loam would be brutal. Crop rotation. I mean, crop rotation for another wasteland also is tough. Oh, a Yavamaya. Ugh. Art is so hard to beat. Oh no, do you... Fuck me. Okay. So, I just concede, right? I have, like, one basic island in my deck. Just try it. Uh. Ugh. Um, let's pick up a Mox Opal here, I think. I just need this artifact-based stability here. So Mox Opal pays for this. Do I just play another land drop to force my opponent to dedicating resources? Probably. I don't think I play out these Ornithopters. I'm going to treat these Ornithopters as points of burn, if that makes sense. Bash in for four. That brings my opponent to 15. I am also going to do a play that's not very good, but gives me a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of tempo. Uh... Okay, there's another tabernacle. You know, just just in case I get rid of the first one somehow, which I can't. All right, so that forces my opponent to replay the exploration. Yep. So opponent's going wild, and uh, I can't go wide anymore. That's a problem. Uh, that fetch land is also a problem. That just means that my opponent can continuously get new lands, and like. The, the luck of, like, what does life from the loam hit isn't mattering. And the loam... The loam is returning their other tabernacle. Uh, it's not looking good. All right, so I pay for you. I think as soon as my opponent makes zombie tokens, it's just, like, not feasible for me to win anymore. That was a very good draw. I think it's time to do both of these. Um, for reasons that'll become clear in just a second. I hit for eight, putting my opponent to six. The idea of playing both of these out is that I can use Retrofitter Foundry to kind of save one of them. That's me on stage, sure. Um, but I think my opponent gets Field of the Dead tokens this turn, um, and then I can't win. Unless I, like, top a status beer or something? Okay, yeah. So that's going to be two, two blockers with Field of the Dead. Uh, got a spear in my deck. Still even? It is. Uh, yeah. Opponent still also gets one more land drop, right? So I was going to upkeep, sacrifice an ornithopter, turn it into, like, a constructor, whatever this, uh, 4-4 four -four is. Yeah. Turn it into a construct, dodge tabernacle that way, and then use that to, um, get my lethal damage with this construct token. All right, there's... Life from the Loam. I guess I would need, like, Shadow Spear and, like, Ancient Tomb or something like that. So, let's do that. 
Uh, I guess I'm not keeping it anyway, right? Because that doesn't really help me with the zombies. Maybe it does help me with the zombies. All right, so let's sacrifice that ornithopter. I'll pay. Then I'll pay for my construct as well. Not sure if that's 100% correct. Emery's a cool draw. Uh, I don't know. Um, like, I, we're, we're at the point of the game where my opponent has such incredible inevitability. I don't even think they try to trade with my construct here. I think they just chump block it. Yeah. My opponent just can make so many, so many idiots now. Like, there's one queued up here with Misty. It's another Maze of Ith on a Dark Depths. Okay, I, I think with the Maze of Ith there, I'm, I'm just at, like, 0% to win this. Uh, this, is, this is a tough match, folks. Uh, what are we, 2-2 two two now? Yeah, we're 2-2 two two now. Okay, final round. Um, don't quite have enough initial mana sources to get going here. I have two mana to play a turn one reality chip, but nothing to equip it to to kind of like try and go off with these LEDs. So I think I just mulligan this one. Hey, on six, I'll keep this. Um, pitching an Emery. Although honestly, it might be better to just pitch the thought monitor in case my Emery dies to like a lightning bolt, fatal push, sorts of plashers, that sort of thing. Um, I am hoping for a zero drop artifact. Thank you. To make this hand a little bit better. Or I guess I I guess I didn't need that, right? Alright. So there's an Emery. Finding some okay stuff. Um I'm unsure whether or not I'm gonna crack this bobble. I think I'm gonna go with no for the short term because of Thought Monitor. My opponent is one of these like blue Narset based control decks. Um a little scary for me. Um, because, like, that's just a turn three play that's just very good against me. Um, what is a Bluster Storm? Sure. Uh, I can YOLO this. I can absolutely YOLO this. I don't know that it's correct, too. But all these cards are at least going in play. Give up a lot trying to make this happen. The Thought Cast on top is super upper. Is this revealed? No, you may look at the top card. So, like, I could equip this here, but then I can't play the thought cast that's on top of my library. Um, so I'm just going to chill. Um, this means that, like, Prismatic Ending can answer this reality chip in a pretty unfortunate way. My opponent is playing Terminus. That's also uh, something that would be pretty damn good right now. So I, I, I played this sequence out in a way that would immediately let me equip reality chip to Ornithopter. Um, but maybe I should have just, like, played the reality chip first all right so one two three artifacts yeah i think i'm gonna go for the equip i think i am just going to start here please don't hull breach me my reality chip is getting removed in response that's fine into a brainstorm oh is my opponent trying to set up a situation where their fluster can counter this thought cast okay there's the fetch in the island so I can technically pay for this using LED. I think that's not great for me. I'm just going to like take my draw to next turn and hope that's still good then. Um, it might not be. Like Nar Narset is very much a thing that can happen. I didn't really expect that Fluster to be able to get that thought cast. I wasn't expecting multiple pieces of interaction. Matic ending. Taking out the Ornithopter. Yeah... That's, uh, that's tough. Finding a Teferi. Okay. So I guess we're grinding. I have to wait to make this token because my opponent has a Teferi. And a Ponder. For sure, sure. Love this art, by the way. Okay. But no Teferi, so they may have some other interaction for me. I'm hoping I get to poke and kill this Narset so I can do this thing. Okay. Let's attempt. Like, there's a good chance this just gets ambushed by something. But if it does, I will just sacrifice this servo and try to play a long game. The opponent does have red. That's not unexpected here. Dark Typhoon is fine. You block. I sacrifice this servo. 
make a 1-1. One, one. And then if I hold up 3 mana, I can turn that into a 4-4. Four, four. The other thing I can do is just, like, try to go ham with the reality chip right now. I know one of my opponent's cards is Teferi. I can go reality chip, one colorless floating, end up with one blue floating after playing LED, and give up Thought Monitor to go for the equip. That is significantly worse for me if it does not work. And significantly better for me if it does. I think I'm just going to go ahead and untap this now so I can't run into any weird timing scenarios and call it a turn. Like, my, my opponent's Planeswalker here is better than my Retrofitter Foundry. Yeah, yeah. so they return that. I turn this into a 4-4, and now a Sorcery Speed Prismatic Ending and answer this token. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Uh, Psy is a great draw. Try to kill Narset. I imagine that shark will just jump in the way. Now, it looks like it's not that clear cut. Okay. Narset is dead. That might mean my opponent has another one. Uh, let's attempt to go wide. And then play you. Did my stuff work? Uh, my stuff worked. So, Psy plus Retrofitter Foundry is super cool because it just means I can pump out 4 4 construct tokens. All right, Teferi plus. That doesn't do a ton right now. Chase is fine. If it unsummons this. Oh, wow, it brainstorms. Sure. I don't know how many, like, Terminus Supreme Verdict type cards my opponent is playing, um, but they will be good um, if my opponent does have access to them. When I was thinking about attacking there, which scares me, because that means, like, Brainstorm Terminus. Nope, never mind. All right, there is a Brainstorm. Feels weird to move into second main phase before doing that. But I guess if they've already locked in that they're not going to attack conceptually, that's totally fine. Maybe a Prismatic Ending? It's going to be a Prismatic Ending on the Construct Token. Absolutely. Then at end step, sacrifice this Thopter, make a new 4-4. Ooh. I don't have Swords of Plowshares for that, so I can't uh, touch their Planeswalkers this turn. Uh, they can't. They're hemorrhaging a lot of resources to deal with my shit, but they're doing an okay job at it. Alright, uh, now this Narset is out of the way, I can potentially do some cool stuff. So, here is a Reality Chip. Here is a Memnite. I think this is going to be a hold priority situation. So I'm going to... Cast Thought Monitor, hold priority, and then crack this LED for blue. And I can keep whatever these cards are in my hand. And then we're going to go ahead and go for a Reality Chip Equip on a Thopter token. And now, now we're in business. I'm fine with playing this Urza Saga. A very oh right, I have to stack those, that's fine. But it's a very powerful effect. I am quite happy to have access to oh god, another one. Um do I want to sacrifice anything with Psy here? You just draw that and try to continue going. Yes, I think I do. I guess Ornithopter is worse than other Thopter token. Alright. So there's a Lotus Petal. Yeah. Now we're talking. All right, that is a one mana Thought Cast. Yes. Uh, so to continue going at this point is somewhat costly. It costs me two Lotus Petals. I think I'm just going to um, Thought Cast past that. There is a Spring Leaf Drum. That's fine. Uh, another sigh on top. There's a lotus petal. Um, I think two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not quite in lethal range, but I'm not far off from it. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and stop there. Okay, I just have one thing that can attack. All right, we'll call that a turn. Um, again, I I could go deeper. I'm not sure. To what extent it is correct to do so. That Retrofitter Foundry quietly did a lot of work in uh, making this game reasonable. For sure, sure. Um, that is a shuffle. Is an attacking shark. 
Uh, that makes me feel like Terminus, but I will just take two. I'm not going to sacrifice two Thopters here. Or actually, I should have blocked and then uh, junked with Retrofitter Foundry. Okay, Supreme Verdict is happening. So what do you have? A dress down, sure. So I know I have another Psy. I'm always making a mana here. Do I want to draw a card or do I want a 1-1 one, one post Supreme Verdict? I want a 1-1 one, one post Supreme Verdict. So then two mana, make that. I'm about to have, like, Psy and Urza Saga online. Um, plus, I do just, like, have the reality chip still. All right. I could sit here and think about this for a very long time. I'm just going to start here. I know my opponent has Dress Down, which makes Urza Saga a little awkward. Let's do a new Ornithopter here. Go whip to that token. Okay. Now I can start playing some stuff. I've already played a land drop. See if I can force my opponent to use that dress down. No is the answer. I just have four copies of Urza Saga, though. Um, so now I'm out of mana, right? Now I'm out of mana. Uh, this will go at Teferi, so that Teferi can't just uh, immediately bounce something. Uh, this game is an insane grind. All right, they're going just for... End of turn dress down. Like, with, with all these Urza Sagas, I'm very happy that the, the dress down is gone. Uh, yeah, uh, can't trip away. Game's nuts. Cross out my graveyard for now. Give us a little more breathing room. Okay, that is a shuffle with that ponder. Still more can trip. All right. They can fetch again. It's going to be end of turn. Make an idiot. Or rather, grow an idiot. So my opponent can still technically do something like Terminus. So I am probably just going to make this construct, do my attacks, and then go from there with the rest of my turn. All right. So I don't have a Pithing Needle. I think I'm just going to pick up Shadow Spear. Urza. Um, that's very good. I don't think I want to do anything else before I know like whether or not some of these planeswalkers are dead. I send this construct at Jace. I send a little bit too much stuff at Barry. And that at Jace as well. I think I can I think I can deal with randomly losing some of this stuff in combat given my ability to grind. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make my my opponent sort all that stuff out. I, I just don't want to play more stuff and get got by instant speed terminus off of that Teferi Plus. Like, I have multiple Urza Sagas here. If I can clean these Planeswalkers up, I will probably just win the game. Okay. Um, yeah. Since this doesn't actually cost me a card from hand, I am good with doing this. If it cost me a card from hand, I would not do this. Can I play this? No, I've already made my land drop. Um, I can go deeper from here. I do not think I want to. All right. There is a Narset. That's fine. Yep. What, what do you got? Do you have more Supreme Verdicts? Snapcaster Supreme Verdict? Terminus? Um, there is also a real concern of one of us getting decked if opponent does, is not playing um, a Days Undoing sort of thing. Uh, there is a Dress Down, so that gets rid of my Construct tokens. Bye. Technically could have floated some mana there. Um, and I should have. It turns Thopters into Constructs. Yeah, that was a mistake. Um, I'm trying to play a little bit quickly here. Uh, there's a lot going on uh, in terms of clock here. Nothing about you. Okay, op opponent concedes there. That's fine. Holy shit, folks. What a game. Uh, absolutely wild. I, I did not know we could grind that hard. Uh, given how that game played out, I don't think I sideboard much. Like, I could play an Echoing Truth to bounce Planeswalkers out of play, or bounce Shark Tokens out of play or something. But my plan is probably go wide of my opponent, and outvalue my opponent. The LEDs are a little sketch, but, like, I found opportunities to use them, and they were very good when I did get to use them. 
I think Aether Spellbound being too durable gives it the nod over Dismember or Echoing Truth, and then I'm just like not sure if I should board anything at all. I don't think Shadow Spear is great, but there are also going to be times where like that gets me through a chump blocking shark or something. I think I'm just gonna resubmit the main deck. Uh yeah. <laughs> I I will I will keep the modern horizons to hand. Like all all this other stuff can come later, and I will just immediately start playing this Urza Saga game. I will inflict a large amount of punishment on myself. Um just via the damage I do to myself with this Ancient Tomb. But I think that's okay. Um, I will... I will just play out the Memnite as a 1-1 attacker. That grows these constructs. Brainstorm away. Match has been just insane. I'm really enjoying this. Um, that's nice. That fetching pattern kind of tells me that I maybe don't have to worry about Back to Basics and Blood Moon quite as much. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Um, notably leaving up red over white. That's a shuffle. Dress down would be insane. All right. I, w I will just continue to make these. See if my opponent fetches in response. Yep. I didn't have the pithing needle last game, but that doesn't mean I don't have it now, you know? I believe I will just be getting a mox opal to smooth out my mana and increase my artifact count if I eat a supreme verdict or something. Or red. Wow. Um, I could just get the retrofitter foundry, but... I think I want to get that l later rather than now. Um, saga again. Probably just Saga again. I don't want to play Reality Chip this turn. I guess I can just Thought Cast right now. And see if my opponent wants to blast that. They do. Uh, yeah. New Saga. Bash for five. Just like, here's my damage. Didn't eat an end of turn Brainstorm. Setting up a Terminus there. So that's good. One doesn't have double white for Supreme Verdict yet. Got like meltdown type things to think about. That supreme verdict to think about. Okay. Meltdown? Meltdown's good. The fairy, absolutely. Sure thing. Okay, that's not bad. So this this is a turn where I think about how much damage I want to push. Um I don't think I want to expose this other Urza Saga construct token to Supreme Verdict. I think I'm gonna bait a Pyroblast here. So this gives me one more damage. And like, opponent has been like very conscientiously fetching red here. So we're going to attempt to Memnite, Poke to Fairy, Construct, attack them. Right, I am successful. Um, I'm not going to do anything else here. Like, I have tapped differently to try and do that, but I think I just want to activate this Urza Saga at my opponent's end step. And just really put them to the test. Like, they can have a dress down and like that will be very good uh the worlds where they don't are rough let's just make that and i have a lot of options here with what i can go with i think i'm just going to go with an aether spell bomb because that just draws me a card if shit goes south here i think we're going to do this like this land retrofitter foundry and then we'll attempt the attack not you so I've left myself in a pretty good situation to bounce a creature that comes in. There is a dress down. Okay. So that kills my constructs. When it goes to six. Got two mana available. Um, I can't actually equip with this. I will save this Memnite for Psy, I think. Just pass the turn for a Retrofitter Foundry activation. Where's the postures on the reality chip is fine. Are you a uh, anything relevant? No, you're a jellyfish. Yeah, and then next turn I'll start the whole like Psy retrofitter foundry shenanigans unless that happens. Um, so there, there's my one one. I have I have two damage on board and the ability to bounce a blocker. That's all fine. Uh, let's just immediately start with getting in there. See if I get my damage. Not all of it. I get one. Then I get to vomit some cards. Um, I'm fine with playing this out. Like, my life total is currently relevant. Really don't want that to get forced or blasted. Uh, yeah. Um, at this point, I think I am going to convert that into a card. Hell yeah. Uh, order needs to change a little there. So now this is a single mana. Um, 
not going to play the LED first. I can play the LED first, crack it for blue, and then in some fringe scenarios, something kind of cool happens. Hold or play? Hold. Game is very close. Like, opponent's life total is low, but they have more resources than I do. Yeah, that's quite strong. Uh, if opponent doesn't have a source of plowshares, I can just kill that. Prismatic ending. Okay. So is this just rem remove everything on site that is possible to remove? It is. How much does this currently cost? Four. Costs three. Costs two. I think I am going to cast it while it costs two rather than play out my ornithopter so that I can draw a sigh and still have something in hand. Oh, fuck Narset. Ugh. I, I, I think I needed to play that anyway. Um, I was just not actively thinking about it. All right. Um, that goes at Narset, so Narset can't draw another card. I think that's better than putting my opponent to three. Um, I may be supposed to hold that Ornithopter for, like, a board wipe, but if I, like, have one power after a board wipe, that's not the best. I don't know. Like, if I, if I send at their face last turn, I have lethal this turn, but, like, letting them have another card off of Narset is very dangerous. I'm also not sure if I'm supposed to attack Narset with one or two bodies on my turn. Uh, clock is also extremely relevant. Like, I, I am behind on clock. Both of our decks have a lot of moving parts, and the games are slow enough where we get to use all of our moving parts. Like, opponent has a prismatic ending, and they're trying to figure out what to remove. It is the token. That's fine. All right. Equip that to Ornithopter. That goes at face. That tries to finish off Narset. Last is fine. That's why I didn't equip on the other one. And I'll just hold this land because of City of Traders. Just down is fine. Uh, this is the nail biter, right? Like we we are in a top deck war. Uh, opponent has cantrips. Oh god, that's very strong. Yeah. All right. So I equip you. Uh, uh, opponent is currently in the better position, but it's definitely scary for both of us. Okay, okay, okay. sure, sure, sure. Oh fuck, that's very bad. Um, I th think. I think I want that city in play still. That's going at their face. I am absolutely in kill opponent before they kill me mode. Sure. I don't know if they need to swords that aggressively. I don't blame them. Uh, I think I'm never going to do anything during my opponent's upkeep. I'm going to remove that stop. Uh, that's very good. Also, is this game two? I think this is still game two. It does have to kill me. Um, it becomes difficult for them to win the next game if this is game two. But like, the last 40 minutes have been a blur. Uh, that is, uh, take a look at my top cards and make it sad for me. All right. Players of Saga. End turn. Probably die to Mentor. Definitely die to Mentor. All right. Yeah, then a spell just kills me here. Okay, that's a ponder. Sure, sure, sure. The opponent has at least three dress down, if not the entire play set. Um, that's very good to know. There's another Narset. And the opponent has very, very, very much lethal. And I die. Okay, yeah. We have another we have another game. Um I think I'm going to play Echoing Truth or Monk Tokens. But my opponent doesn't just have that easy out of Destroy my, sh like, just slam a mentor on turn three. Like, this buys, oh, does that buy enough time? Maybe that doesn't buy enough time for me to actually kill. Nah, deck's perfect. Um, nope. Fuck. Um, I'll keep that. Pitch the city. Not good, but I will keep it. And just kind of hope that my thought cast effects, um, do something meaningful. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, 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 thought cast, spell bomb, and then I'll have a thought monitor on my next turn, four, five, six, seven, yeah, I'll have a thought monitor on my next turn, or now I don't, right, uh, it doesn't matter, I play Urza Saga instead, sorry, commentary is gonna be a little more, uh, terse here, oh shit, I could have, uh, played thought monitor, 
Uh, yeah, I am. I am trying to play exceptionally quickly here, folks. Um, I'm sure that's obvious. Okay, that's a Teferi. Teferi is fine. Yep. Okay. So there's Urza Saga. There's some mana. There's some blue mana. Thought monitor for two mana. Draw two. Uh, pass turn. Uh, then next turn I have activate Urza Saga and play Psy and kill Teferi. Okay. Sure. 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 All right, just first things first, kill Teferi. Yeah. Uh, Kozilek's return occurs. Um, Ancient Tomb. Die. Bobble. I need to always yield to that. There's a Plowshares is very good. Uh, but because of Springleaf Drum, I can still make an Urza Saga Construct Token. I need to filter this Bobble as well. Uh, Narset is very good. I guess that was a this is one card per turn i guess that was a reason to immediately use the bobble i guess construct size is a reason not to so there's that token idiot um i assume this just still gets me retrofitter foundry um it's very powerful uh construct attacks you token oaks our set i think see how that goes I imagine I lose Construct. Yep. Narset gets poked. Do this thing. Opponent's getting another Swords to Plowshares. Ah, cool. Uh, Lotus Petal, not what I'm looking for. Yeah, I should have uh, maybe poked a fairy instead. Meltdown. Absolutely awful for me. Yep. Uh, I mean, opponent does still need to kill me with two minutes on clock. So, like, that's my real win condition is the clock at this point. See if opponent can just, like, find a shark or a mentor or something. Because if they can't, um, they're pretty likely to time out. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Oh, that is a hard cast shark typhoon. Um, uh, yeah, that probably beats me in uh, less than two minutes. Okay. I mean, GG's. Like, regardless of how it goes, GG's. Like, this was a very epic game. Uh, attack you. That's uh, kind of how I expected this was going to go. Uh, the whole hard cast Shark Typhoon is going to spiral out of control very quickly. Um, and I'm not going to, like, set every single stop and try to time my opponent out here. Like, th that's my win condition, but, like, it's it's very clear that my opponent can win in a minute. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm good with taking the L here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Nope. There's more. Yeah, just source of plowshares. Just any, any, literally anything to increase the clock at this point is is worth doing. Uh, yeah, that's uh, very strong. And there's the brainstorm. Okay. Yeah, like if if I were not f sixing, I could uh, mess with my opponent's clock ever so slightly here. Um, but I think I'm just gonna give this one to them. Like they they played very well. And besides, like, once they just F6 and turn their sharks sideways a couple of times, like, that killed me in five seconds. Um, I guess I don't actually make that at instant speed. I make that at end step uh, because of Jace. Right, there we go. Um, so I'll make another one of these. No! <laughs> I was about to Shadow Spear. Um, I just do like that. Yeah, I, I guess I could have actually put the win on the scoreboard by uh, going and like actively trying to time them out. Maybe I should have done that, but I'm I'm good with this. Yeah, with with five seconds left, I absolutely could have like not f six through all of their turns and gotten the timeout win. That's okay. Like I am I am good with them having that win. They played very well. Um, overall thoughts on the deck list? Pretty good. Uh, like. The reality chip absolutely allowed us to do some very strange things in those very long grindy games versus control. Um, I am unsure that this deck is just like objectively better than the 8-cast deck in terms of like overall matchups and whatnot. Um, but this deck does very interesting things, and you don't quite as frequently just end up with like six drop kappas stuck in your hand like that that's one of the big criticisms of the thought cast deck or like the the eight kappa deck eight cast thought kappa deck you know what i'm saying right so like when you just have like 
four kappas, four thought casts, four thought monitors, or something very close to those numbers. Like, there's a lot of times where you just end up not being able to play your cards, and this deck is more consistently able to play its cards than the uh, eight cast version. But the eight cast version just, like, gets to play this idiot, which kills quickly. Um, in terms of sideboard the sideboard felt medium to me and i often didn't sideboard in my rounds uh and maybe that's right maybe that's wrong but like we did play against eight mulch a couple of times which is kind of an odd matchup right um so i'm i have no conclusions about the sideboard based on the games that i played um like i didn't sideboard whether or not that was right or wrong or whether or not i needed things that weren't there it's hard to say um, I do wish a Pithing Needle was in the 75 for things like Planeswalkers, uh, because I think, like, having a single Pithing Needle, like, that alone would have won me that very long game versus Control. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to go get some lunch, as I am quite hungry. I didn't expect that one to drag on for that long. Uh, anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button. It helps out a lot. Uh, if you end up wanting to support my content, you can do so by doing a donation decklist, becoming a YouTube member, or following me on Patreon. Have a great rest of the day. See ya!